Greetings, gassers. My normal mugs in the wash. So I'll make do with this one. Now, I'm going to make some cakes for a party. And one of the cakes I'm going to make, uh, well, I'm going to make some cupcakes. I'm going to make another cake, but that's a different story. I'm going to make some cupcakes. And I wanted them to be red, because there's a theme to this party. Um, and I thought, well, what I'll do, I'll make some red velvet cakes. So I went on, obviously, Cupcake Gemma, first stop, and I'm going to use her red velvet cupcake recipe. And then I got thinking this morning, I've actually eaten one of Cupcake Gemma's red velvet cakes. I ate it earlier this year when we went, we were staying up in London and on Valentine's Day, Gemma and Sally, although it turned out to be Dane, not Sally, um, were doing a free personalise your cupcake or cake uh, session because it was Valentine's Day. So being that, you know, she's a bit of my baking hero, my wife said we've got to go and buy a cake or cakes. And you can go and meet Gemma and you can have it personalised. She got jealous when we got in there. So I just has to brush past Gemma on my way out with my cake. I never got to meet her. But never mind. So red velvet cake. So what is a red velvet cake? Well, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it as we go along, but before I do, we're gonna start preparing. So what I've got is 235 grams of self-raising flour. I've got 15 grams of cocoa powder, 250 grams of caster sugar, and a three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all of that, I've just mentioned, through a sieve into my mixing bowl because we're gonna we're gonna do it in the old stand mixer. So I'm just gonna get this all sieved in and then I'll tell you a bit about red velvet cakes. So red velvet cakes. Now during the Victorian era the Victorians somehow sussed out that they could soften the proteins, well, I don't know if they actually realised that's what they were doing, soften the proteins of the cake mixtures by using things like corn flour, almond flour uh, and cocoa. And so they started incorporating that, I think I should have used a bit of a finer salt, some of this salt over there, um, and they started incorporating that into their cakes and it gave them this completely different smoother texture like velvet. Hence, they began to call it, or call them, any cakes made that way, velvet cakes. So, where do we get red velvet from? Right, before I tell you, you're going to want four large eggs and then you're going to want some butter, some softened butter, um, and I've got there um, how much stuff? 270 grams of softened butter. And what we're going to do is I'm going to put that butter into there, along with the eggs. Now I was saying to you. Where does the red velvet came from? Well, as it turned out, the, the colour was a result of a chemical reaction. They didn't use colourings. A bit of shell going there, then I'll go down so I can't tell. Yeah, it was. Knew it. Anyway. What it was, was a chemical reaction um, that turned the sort of mixture from a brownie colour, cocoa powder, to a brownish reddy colour. So nowhere near the colour of the red velvet coats we know today, but even so, they noticed this noticeable change. 
to a ready colour. Now, the reason being, like I said, was a chemical reaction because at that time, cocoa powder contained um, these chemicals known as anthocyanins. Now, anthocyanins are what give red colour to some sort of things, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables and things like that. And so, the anthocyanins essentially were what was causing this reaction uh, to lead to this development of the red colour. However, uh, we now removed, um, they add, well they don't remove them, they add like an alkali to cocoa powder nowadays and that has the impact of neutralising those anthocyanins and hence we no longer get that chemical reaction resulting in the colour change. So, so why are we still making red cakes. Why are we making even redder cakes? Well, we'll tell you about that in a second. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna put this on, on a low speed start with, just to start blending these together. And then when we're less likely to get flour spraying everywhere, we'll turn it up to medium um, for about five minutes. This red color is a result of a chap called John Adams. Now John Adams had a company Guess what he made? Yep. He uh, was the Adams Extract Company and they made extracts and dyes. Now, in 1938, the Food, Drug and Cosmetics Act brought in quite strict regulations, but John, he was like a bit crafty and he realised they could make a bit of a kill, just checking that was working all right. Um, they could make a bit of a killing. If he could launch a product that utilised his products. So he released a recipe for a red cake, strangely enough, flavoured with his red dye. Now, he decided to do red was because he'd eaten in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel and he'd been served this sort of cake that he really liked and he decided he was a sort of a replicator. So he, he released freely a recipe that required the use or a considerable use of his red dye. And hence they become very popular and these red velvet coats became the in thing to have. Right, I'm just going to turn that down. And what we're going to do is we're going to start preparing that food colouring. Now we need quite a lot. But what we're going to do is we're going to mix it um, into some buttermilk. Now buttermilk is slightly acidic and we're going to want some acidity. Um, so I'm going to put three tablespoons of buttermilk into this little bowl. And then I'm going to take a, a generous, and by that I might have to get the other pot out, um, like a teaspoon of red paste. Now you want the paste, okay? And we're just going to mix that in because remember this is a really intense red colour. Into that colour mixture, I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then we'll just mix that together. And now, all we're left eventually to add in is I've got some bicarbonate soda, three quarters of a teaspoon of that, and then I've got a teaspoon and a half of cider vinegar. Um, but when we add that. Um, we need to sort of get things moving a bit because the whole idea is the vinegar and the bicarb will give us a chemical reaction um, oops, and give us some gas which in combination with what's in the um, 
self raising flower, the, you know, the bicarb and that that's in there, uh, give us a nice um, spongy, uh, velvety cake. So, um, red velvet cakes, not always called that. Got red on me now. Got red on me. What film's that? Um, they've been known as flame cakes, feather devil's cake. $300 cake, come to that one. Uh, red mystery cake, red carpet cake, Waldorf red cake, red regal cake, red feather cake, red devil's food cake. Although they weren't quite as bright a red as what we have today. So just gonna chuck that dye in there and then we're just gonna mix that. Actually I'll put that in there before we get that anywhere. Then you're washing that water right red and spill it down the side. Um, and now I'm just going to mix that in on low. Just to try and distribute that colour. And if it needs to, I might add a little bit more. So John Adams actually did quite well because during the depression years that sort of followed. Um, things were in rations, you know, butter and stuff like that was rationed. So not only was he promoting his red dye, he also uh, promoted his vanilla extract and his butter flavourings. And that meant that housewives could go ahead and make these luxury cakes without actually using the more expensive and hard to get at that time ingredients. So, again, he made a bit of a killing. We go. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to mix these together and then chuck it in there, give it a really quick, short, uh, low speed mix for about 20, 30 seconds. And then we're going to just finish off with the spatula, make sure it's all mixed in and then put it into the cupcake. So, in that goes, you can see it's immediately fizzing up. You can get that reaction going, scrape all that in there. Like I say, quick mix. And then I'm just gonna scrape it all down, and give it a good mix through with the spatula, and then we'll start Clean our cupcake cases. So, some people, and to be honest, I once thought it as well, um, you think to yourself, well, hang on, these red velvet cakes are meant to be sort of chocolate flavoured. So, surely, aren't they just chocolate cakes that inflate uh, coloured red? Well, no, because chocolate cake would use. Chocolate. And remember, what we've used here instead is cocoa powder. Now, like I said to you, we want to make sure that's all mixed through, but we don't want to end up over mixing this. We just want to make sure we've got no sort of spots in there that aren't done. So, like I say, it's not a chocolate cake. Okay, it's a chocolate flavour cake. Um, and also chocolate cake would use water or coffee as the liquid component whereas um, red velvet cakes um, use buttermilk and vinegar so you know there is a difference and it also gives this tang using this acid gives the tang to your red velvet cake so what we're now going to do is fill our cases. I'm going to rest that in there because I should probably want that later. So I've got some cupcakes uh, already partly uh, done and what we do is we're just going to use a spoon to about three quarter fill 
if I move that over that's going to do oh no it didn't um, so to finish off traditionally um, we would expect to have a cream cheese frosting or topping but actually if you want to be really traditional uh, you have to forget about your cream cheese because that's not whoops now make a mess now uh, that's not actually what the original frosting was right so the oven 170 degrees fan and what we're going to do is we're going to put these in here for about 20 to 22 minutes but as usual we would check them with a cocktail stick or whatever and see if they come out clean and then we're going to let them cool completely before we put our frosting on top. Now I'll tell you about it first. Minute. Originally, it was known as ermine or ermine frosting. That was just a posh name for something that wasn't quite so posh sounding. And that was boiled milk frosting. Well, that don't sound that appetising, does it? Boiled milk frosting. Um, so they they gave it this posh name um, the difference is there's less sugar um, but a lot more butter in it so I suppose in a way it's like a low sugar buttercream now while that's in there cooking um, red velvet cake actually has its own sort of urban myth or urban legend and it's, it concerns a woman who supposedly went into the Waldorf Astoria, Waldorf Astoria, I can't now say it now, she went in the Waldorf, um, and she has a, one of their red velvet cakes, I'm going to sneeze, now look, it's like, oh, phew. Oh, phew. Oh, excuse me, um, so she has one of their cakes and really likes it, so she says, oh, can I have the recipe, and they said, of course you can, madam. So they gave her the recipe and then she comes to pay her bill and her bill's got this like enormous amount of money on it. And she said, what's all this? And they said, oh, you wanted the recipe. Um, so she says, well, I'm not happy about that. And they said, well, you've seen the recipe now, you've got to pay it. So she says, well, I'll, I'll, I'll sort you lie out. So she then goes and releases it free of charge to anybody who wants it and says that screw you over now everybody knows how to make your cake well that's not true there is a museum in america known as the museum of hoaxes and this is known as the ripoff recipe legend and they say actually this goes back to 1940s with a woman eating in a waldorf austere or oh, the waldorf hotel um, and she asked for their fudge cake recipe and they charged her a hundred dollars then of course by the 1960s it had suddenly become this red velvet cake um, it had gone from a hundred dollars to three hundred dollars um, but the Waldorf apparently because they didn't want this sort of argument that you know they'd ripped a customer off anything even though they said it was un wasn't true they decided that the best thing to do was just give everybody who wanted it the recipe for nothing so that's what they did so it started off in the US um, and in the UK it became quite popular particularly from about 2015 onwards so quite recently um, the L London Hummingbirds Bakery now it's funny to say that because uh, I should say that because I was actually asked the other day have you ever made a hummingbird cake? So that's on the plans going ahead. But anyway, so the London's Hummingbird Bakery uh, sell apparently over 440,000 red velvet cupcakes every year. Even though it weren't that long ago, everybody said they're just a gimmick. Everybody move on, no one want one. But they do. So that was just a little bit of a story. All we got left to do is make the, the uh, frosting. Now we don't want to get applying that until we, the cakes are all cooled, 
but we can get on with making it and then just covering it over until we're ready. For the frosting, you're going to need some soft butter again, 150 grams. And you're also going to want, obviously, some cream cheese. I've got here 240 grams. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put it into there with the beater again. Now I've put the guard on this time because we're going to be adding some pasture sugar and it will go everywhere won't it. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to beat this together um, and then I'm going to sift half of my icing sugar. I've got 840 grams of that, half of that into there, mix that in and then add the other half. So let's get making the frosting. There we go, there's our cream cheese uh, frosting in the bag with a widish no nozzle and all we're going to do is we're just going to put a nice big sort of flattish dome on top of each one. Now Gemma would sprinkle some sprinkles on it. She did some little hearts on, on the, this recipe. Um, I'm actually going to put some cupcake toppers on. So I'm not going to put anything like that. And I don't want to put the cupcake toppers on yet because I don't want them getting all sort of like too moist at this stage. So I'll finish these off and then we'll taste one. Here we go. Let's now they're not given how much red because I put extra red in as well that you didn't see me do that. Um, they actually haven't come out as red as I would have liked. Um, mm. Despite that cream cheese frosting being quite overpowering, you're still getting that tang from the cake. bit warm this kitchen so I'll just chill in some of them other ones I've done I haven't got enough room in the freezer my frosting is quite soft at the minute but definitely that slight tanginess that you get with red velvet cake complemented by a bit of a tang from that cream cheese but offset by the, by the sugar. So there you go. My version of Cupcake Camp Gemma's Red Velvet Cake. Mm.